The next story we have is an article on theweek.com. And you, you're probably used to seeing all sorts of, of lists online, you know, top five this, top ten one of these. Now, this is an interesting one. The seven biggest lies you've been told about hacking. From a standpoint of, you know, as an AT&T analyst, I feel like a lot of these are, are fairly well known. But I think as a, for a layperson, you probably, you may or may not know some of these. And there's a, there's a good number, there's seven of them. Um, I'm only going to cover a few of them because the list sort of goes into depth on each one. But I think there's a couple really interesting ones that I think most people should have clarified. Number one, uh, taking down a site is not the same as hacking that site. That's a good point, Matt. But there's a lot of times when uh, just the information in the back end is, is still safe and secure, just the HTML or something has been modified. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it looks as if the site has been taken down, but really the information has not been exposed to the hackers. Another way, I guess, to achieve that would be like through a DDoS attack or mm -hmm. something similar. So it appears like you can't get to the site, and uh, the hackers, quote unquote, will claim victory, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, information has not really been breached. Yep, that's, that's a very good point. Um, I mean, hacking a site is typically relates to finding a vulnerability. There may be no vulnerability in the site. You could find a very well-built, very well-constructed and secure site and still have ways of taking it down. Right. Um, another possibility is that the site was taken down through legal means. You know, Maybe you had the, the cooperation of law enforcement and registrars to take out the domain or to, to the, of the hosting service to take out the, the content that was hosted on the site and it's been taken down that way. That doesn't mean that law enforcement necessarily used hacking techniques to take it down. They had completely legal and technical processes to do so. Right. Um, another interesting point that they made is a hijacked Twitter account is also not the same as having a company be hacked. We saw this recently with US CENTCOM, where ISIS-related hackers you know, hijacked their account, posted messages. I think it was their Twitter account and maybe Instagram or one of the other the services. And I think that's the point here, is that these are third-party services. Right. These are not under the control of US CENTCOM, just the same way that your, your Twitter account is not maintained and owned by, well, yes, you post to it, but you don't host the servers, you don't you know, maintain right. the password controls on it. It's, it's a third-party service. So. And, and sometimes they're even outsourced yet to a third PR-type firm mm -hmm. where it's totally under the control of the other organization, yeah. and even some of the password management there is up to that organization. So it, uh, the danger there, of course, is it can seem like you've been taken. It can make some sort of a political point. So definitely something to be aware of there. Uh, but it's not. Uh, usually those systems are completely separated. So the Twitter or the Instagram, let's say, is not com connected to the back end data. Uh, so it might sound like you've hacked someone. It, it, you can have some political points there. But the truth is the data is really still safe. Um, it's just almost like a publicity stunt. Now, we, we see the same sort of things when a, a device is hacked. For example, if you have like a, an Internet of Things home device, and I, and I think around Black Hat, we usually get a few of these, and they say, company name X has been hacked. When they refer to the device, they're not referring to the company's back-end servers. They're not referring to the, the business side of the, of, right. you know. It's, or it could even just be a device that that company deploys or something like that, not even made by them or anything like that. Sure. It, it grabs headlines, but it's not accurate. Right. There's a couple interesting more points on the, the list. I encourage you all to go check them out. One more that I wanted to bring up was that uh, hacking, the, the myth is that hacking takes skill and very high-tech software. Now, these days, uh, I think we've sort of found that that's not, no longer the case. It's a matter of paying a little bit of money and getting access to uh, remote, con remote access Trojan or the latest version of Zeus, or even as simple as going to uh, a code sharing site. Um, some of these things are actually open source. Some of them have been developed by researchers, um, security analysts as a proof of concept, and they get repurposed for a crime, which is unfortunate, but right. people will do it. Right. Yeah, well, and I'm not, sh I'm not sure that it's ever necessarily required all that much skill or high-tech software. You know, the people are always the weakest link in, mm. in the whole thing, and, you know, social engineering has been around for decades, and we, you know, we see all that kind of you know, social engineering attacks to get passwords or to get you know proprietary data, and that doesn't that takes understanding people, but that doesn't take you know particular skill or or software. That's true. 
we, we still see cases like when Syrian Electronic Army manages to convince uh, a DNS registrar to repoint some domains for them to their own website. That's a form of hacking, but it's really more social engineering than anything else. Right. We also still see social engineering playing a large part in phishing campaigns, where the real hook is to get someone to download something they normally wouldn't by pretending to be somebody that they're not, or you know, having a false sense of urgency, pressuring someone to take an action that they normally wouldn't take. So it's a, it's a great list. I, I recommend everybody t go take a look at it. And uh, maybe you'll learn something new. And maybe you're uh, super security savvy and you're not going to learn a thing. But either way, I think it's a good read.